What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks for the OnePlus Nord and 25 g that you might not know about. Now before we go any further, I do want to remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the video description where I will be linking to several other videos you might find useful, as well as some information about pricing and availability, because this stuff is always changing. But with that being said, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to create a screen recording. Now this is a really basic feature and it's really easy to do. All you gotta do is pull down the shade twice, go to the second page, and the screen recorder is right here. Tap on the icon, hit start now, and as you can see this little bar is gonna show up right here. From here you can go to the settings, and this is gonna allow you to change several different things. You can change the video resolution, frame rate, audio source, so by default it is just going to be the internal audio, but if you want to narrate it for example, you can always do that as well. So once you've gone through all your options here, go ahead and hit the record button. Now once you do this, it's going to start recording immediately. Some phones have a countdown, but not this phone. And then when you want to stop, simply pull down the shade, tap here, and as you can see, you can hit the stop button, and you can also pause it. And once you stop the screen recording, it's going to be saved right to your gallery. Another thing to keep in mind is that when you stop a screen recording, this little bar is not going to go away automatically. You actually have to exit out. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Definitely a really basic, easy feature to use. Now I'm going to show you several different things you can do with the power button. Now this phone doesn't have quite as many options as say a Samsung for example, but there are definitely several different things you can do. So first of all, by default, if you double press this button, it's going to open the camera. Definitely a nice, convenient feature to have because no matter where you are on the phone, say you're on Instagram for example doing something and you want to capture something quickly in the moment, all you got to do is double press this button and it's going to open the camera right up. But if you want to turn it off, maybe you keep activating it by accident for example, you can do this really easily. So to do this, the first thing you're going to do is go to settings. From here, go to convenience tools. From this menu, go to power button. And where it says double click the power button, go here. And as you can see, by default, again, it is going to turn on the camera, but you can also have it do none. And now, if you double press the power button, it's not going to open the camera. Now the next thing we can do in this menu is change what happens when you press and hold the power button. So by default, if you press and hold the power button, it's simply going to turn on your power menu. And as you can see, there we go. But if you want, you can also have it turn on your Google Assistant. So now we can press and hold, and the assistant is going to pull up. Now you might be wondering, when you set it like this, how do you actually turn the phone off? Well it's actually a lot easier than you might think. Instead of pressing and holding the power key, what you're going to do is press and hold the power key and the volume up key at the same time like this, and the power menu is going to pull right up. So again, not a whole lot of options for the power key, but it's definitely nice that we can at least change a couple things. Now I'm going to show you a feature called three finger screenshot. Essentially, this is a gesture feature that's actually on by default, and it makes it a little easier to take a screenshot. Now in case you don't know, the normal way to take a screenshot is by pressing the power key and the volume down key at the same time like this. So that's already pretty easy, but with the three finger screenshot, all you got to do is put three fingers on the screen and swipe down like this, and there we go. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to change your NFC settings. Now to do this, the first thing we're going to do is go to settings, so pull down the shade like this, settings is right here, from here go to connection and sharing, and from here of course go to NFC, and as you can see by default NFC is going to be on, if you don't want it on for whatever reason you can always turn it off, and from here you can also go to tap and pay. As you can see here, by default the payment system is going to be Google Pay, but if you have something else, like for example I have Amex, you can select that instead. Now I'm going to show you how to change the color setting on your display. So to do this, as always, the first thing we're going to do is go to settings. From here, go to display and brightness. From here, go to screen mode. So right here. And as you can see, by default it is set to vivid, and this is going to make the colors a little bit brighter and bolder, and on this phone with the OLED display technology, it definitely looks really nice. But some people might not like this, you might prefer a more natural look, and in that case you can switch it to gentle, and as you can see it's going to make the colors a little bit more dull, but also a little bit more natural looking. This mode might also save a little bit more battery, although I feel like it's probably going to be a minuscule amount if any, and it might be a little easier on your eyes. But in general, if you're consuming a lot of content, if you're playing games, watching videos, stuff like that, I would personally keep it at vivid, which again is the default setting. Now from here we can also go back to the main display menu, and here you can change the screen's temperature. So as you can see, you can make it a little bit warmer, or a little bit cooler, so that's definitely a nice thing to be able to customize. 
The next thing I'm going to show you is how to turn off the Google feed. Now to be perfectly honest, I always have this thing off, I find it really annoying, but I did turn it back on for the sake of this video, and in case you don't know what it is, the Google feed is basically this thing, it has a bunch of news and random things that pretty much nobody really cares about, so if you're like me and all you ever do with it is accidentally swipe onto it, I'm going to show you how to turn it off. So what you're going to do is press and hold your finger on a blank spot on your home screen like this. From here, go to home settings. In here where it says Google, by default this will be on, but all you gotta do is toggle it off. And now if we go back to the home screen, it's no longer gonna show up. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to show and hide your battery percentage on the status bar. So as you can see right now, by default the battery percentage is not gonna be up there, but don't worry, you can easily turn it on. So first thing we're gonna do is go to settings. From here, go to battery. From the battery menu, go to advanced settings. And as you can see right here, by default, show battery percentage on status bar is again going to be off. So toggle it on. And now the battery percentage is up here. Now one thing to keep in mind in case you haven't noticed already, when the battery percentage is off, you can still actually view it simply by pulling down your shade like this and it's going to be right there. So if you want your status bar to be a little bit more minimalistic, but you also want to see where you're at battery wise, this is definitely a good compromise. Now in this menu, another feature I want to talk about is called high performance mode. This basically is going to allow your phone to use the full power of the processor at all times, but as you can see it does consume quite a bit more battery. So this can be useful if you're doing something like uploading things for example, or maybe you're playing a game or something like that and need a little extra power, in that kind of situation high performance mode is definitely a nice thing to have. But as you can probably imagine, when they say it consumes more power, they're really not kidding. High performance mode when it's left on for a long time does drain the battery pretty quickly, so I definitely only recommend using this when you really need it. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to customize your ambient display. Now if you're coming from a different phone that has a similar feature, you might know this as the always on display. The ambient display is basically a screen between the lock screen and the phone being completely off. So basically this right here. So I'm going to show you how we can customize it. So first things first, go to settings. From here, go to ambient display. And as you can see, we got a few options. So these are the default settings. As you can see, it is going to be on. And to see the ambient display, simply pick up your phone, so like this. And there we go. And it doesn't really stick around for very long. But you can also switch it to be always on. So we got a few options here. By default, the always on is not going to be activated, but you can have it always on unless you're in power saving mode. You can also schedule it, or you can have it on no matter what. So for example, we'll do all day, lock the display, and as you can see, the ambient display is on, and it's pretty much going to stay on indefinitely. And then you can also hide the fingerprint icon. And for the ambient display, that's pretty much it. While it might not be nearly as customizable as some other phones, I am still glad we at least have the feature. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is how to activate split screen. Now this is weird because there's not really a gesture for it. It almost feels kind of like a hidden feature for that matter. But what you're going to do is go to your recent apps. As you can see, I got the two apps I want to use already loaded. Press and hold on one of them. Go to split screen. And as you can see, you can select the other one. And that's pretty much it. And then of course, to go back to normal, simply grab this bar right here and drag it either all the way up or all the way down. But those were my tips and tricks for the OnePlus Nord N25 G. Remember, if you want to learn more about this phone or if you want to see some more information about pricing and availability, definitely check out the links in the video description. But this concludes my tips and tricks video for the OnePlus Nord N25 G. If you found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipa's Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next one.